Hey, what's going on, guys? Derek James here, and we are live here in the Facebook group for the business review. If you guys watched on the first business review case study we looked at, we looked at capability statement, website, SAM profile, as well as a dynamic small business search profile. In today's session, we'll be looking at all of those as well, an exception for the website. We're looking at Apex Infrastructure and Technology. They're a brand new company, and um, I believe they've just gotten set up within the last month here. And so um, the web their website isn't up yet, but I'm sure it will be um, you know relatively soon. But for now, that will not hold us back. They've reached out to me and asked um, to participate in the business review that we uh, started doing. I appreciate them for reaching out and you know participating as part of the group here because everybody who you know participates it helps everybody else. You know, it's not like a, a selfish thing that only benefits you. It benefits anybody who watches this forever in the future. And the more businesses we get to review, um, we're going to get to look at different types of companies and um, you know different different angles, different industries, and just how people approach things differently. So um, you know, just the the more the the merrier. To to be honest with you guys, so. Um, the first thing we will be looking at today is uh, the capability statement for Apex. Um, I will give you a brief um, look. This is the capability statement that we are working with today. But before taking a look at that, um, if you don't have a capability statement yet, just head on over to my website, govkidmethod.com. It'll take you to that page that you know uh, we were just at. Just click on GovCon resources and scroll to the bottom. There's two different CAPE statements here. Click on either one of them and it's gonna take you to the same page. And um, it'll take you to my capability statement page where if if you need any sort of, um, you know, if you need a capability statement and you don't have a structure or a layout yet, you can get either one of these from me uh, for free right now. Um, they're probably not gonna be free forever. So just kind of giving you a, a heads up, there's some other things in the work. So if you're thinking about getting a capability statement, um, I've just offered this so you don't have to pay somebody, you know, hundreds of dollars to make one for you. Like you can start with this, it's totally editable and you can um, switch out, you, you know, all the information, all the dummy text that I put in here, uh, put yours in here in place of it, make it your own. Um, and so that's available at the website under GovCon resources, just so you know. So coming to Apex infrastructure and technology. So we have their capability statement um, so there's a couple things, if you recall it, or if you've seen the, the first review we did, I talk a little bit about aesthetics, but then I also talk about the core meat and information that's actually in the, um, the, the capability statement itself. So aesthetically is, is what I'm going to talk about right now. So right off the bat, we see that this is a, a very rather um, basic and straightforward type of a capability statement. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's really it's really up to you and how you want to you know position yourself. Um, you know this they've probably created this themselves. You know Apex, and because they're new, they probably wanted you know to get something going like right away. That that's kind of what I'm I'm thinking when it comes to this. Uh, you know it's primarily white and black with a little bit of yellow, which I think is fine. I talk about color and, um, you know, if it's your branding colors, uh, white, black, and yellow, then, you know, that's, that's okay. I would just, I would caution to use a lot of yellow because of um, government doesn't like to do a lot of color printing, as I've stated before. And yellow is definitely one of those high, um, you know, cost, you know, ink printer type, uh, you know, colors you know, different, different colors cost different and, and yellow is on the more expensive end. So, um, I, I don't know how much of a factor that is. I, I just, I certainly wouldn't do, um, much more yellow than that. Uh, so moving on, um, the layout apex specializes in providing it and cybersecurity solutions. Okay. Located just outside of the nation's capital. So we're talking about DC apex provides superior services for our clients. All right. So we have NAICS codes. We've got four NAICS codes, um, 561, 311, 541, 511. Um, 
So right off the bat with NAICS codes right here, I don't know what these NAICS codes are. I, I don't know what they mean. So, you know, if you go into, let's make this a little bit hands-on, you guys. I'll go to SBA NAICS, let me, SBA NAICS code. That's always kind of where I go to, to get, um, to define NAICS codes if I don't know what they are. So coming back, 561311, 561-311, I'll do a search. That lets me know, okay, employment placement agency with a size standard of 27.5 million, got it. Okay, so my point here is you guys, this is not conveying that. So one thing I would do is include um, a bit of a, you know, employment placement agency. That's something you may want to put along next to this. And then the same for these, these other ones, just so you know, like what you're, what you're dealing with here. Um, I'm actually curious because I don't know why that's, that's standing out to me. Um, I'm curious in my examples that if I, if I wrote it out, let me see. So in my examples, I, I didn't write it out, but, um, well, I actually, I did underneath it. I, I give information, technology services, medical services, professional administrative. And then in this other example, I actually do, um, like five, six, one, one, zero is professional and administrative five, six, one, two, 10 is facility support. So anybody who's reading this capability statement, the whole purpose of the capability statement is to very quickly allow them to surmise what your GovCon business is all about and the services that you provide. And when you have your capability statement set up like this with just the codes, um, I know that you're kind of explaining here and here what your um, you know business does, but you need to specifically identify what each code uh, stands for, in my opinion. Um, so moving on, pertinent data, uh, location, Fairfax, Virginia, good. Dunn's number, uh, perfect. Cage code, waiting on approval, that's fine. Registered with the SAM, uh, registered with the system for award management SAM, got it. Okay, so yeah, that's all good. Like I, I definitely want everybody to have their cage and their Dunn's number um, called out somewhere specifically, really easy for a contracting officer to find in their capability statement. And you've successfully done that here. And once you get your cage code, you will be updating that. So that's fine. Next, core capabilities. So Apex provides IT and cybersecurity solutions, which include SharePoint, admin, Java developer, a database admin, systems network engineers, and cyber security engineers. Okay, I mean, that's fine. And then Apex also provides staffing solutions, including uh, recruitment slash screening, interviewing candidates, certification, verification, skills verification, criminal background checks, DMV, and drug testing. Got it. So um, so those are your capabilities, and I'm assuming that those align with these NAICS codes. However, because we don't know what these NAICS codes stand for, we can't really check that. But, you know, again, that's a, like a simple, like eyeball check you could do. If I were to read this and then the descriptions were here, I could go like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. These NAICS codes line up with what they're saying their capabilities are. Um, and I can't do that. So again, just um, another stressor for this point right here. Contact information. We have the CEO with the phone number and the email and the COO with the phone number and the email as well. That's that's great. Um, you have a, a header and a footer um, just with your company information and that's fine. Um, you can probably leave that as you will. You don't have a place in here at all for uh, any type of past performance. So I know that you're you're new and you're starting out and so you don't have contracts to reference. That's fine. Um, I don't know if you watched the first business review that we did last week, but that company also did not have, you know, past performance, but they still had a past performance section. Um, and what they really did was they, they took two key individuals in the company, you know, like kind of like what you have here, the CEO and the COO. And then they wrote a few sentences about the, um, the the professional capabilities of the person. So if uh, Fran B. Franco and Joshua Reese 
have certain a, a certain skill set and certain you know experience that they're bringing to this company which you know i'm assuming that they are since they're going after very specific fields here you could expand on the experience that you guys have personally because you can guys you can use that so i would expand on this here more than just the you know the contact information so you can either you know re give this a new title and you know expand or you know break this out into another area and just have that be contact information and then add a new area about you know personal experience or company experience or or something that way you're at least talking to something because you don't want to just leave it like as a an elephant in the room that you don't have any any experience at all because everybody has some sort of experience and that's what i you know always like to stress just looking um just from a uh, a layout standpoint it looks like you've got spaces between all your major headings um except for core capabilities and you probably know that and you probably were doing that because of space um so one thing that I would like to talk about is maybe, and again, I'm not sure why you you designed it this way, aesthetically speaking. Um, and I'm not saying that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm just asking the question. Um, a lot of capability statements. You see, if you go to Google and you look at capability statement under Google images, you can see a, a lot of different types of capability statements, but they all have kind of like these common themes with layouts and they all look you know pretty uh, professional give or take some of them so you may want to uh, adopt a, a layout once you um, you know once you guys are up and going um, if you're going to start you know emailing it out responding to source of salt market research meeting with Oz to boost small business reps or contracting officers or even going to government contracting conferences you may want to consider adopting a sort of template and you could even use my template if you want to. Um, if, if you're like dead set and you're happy with the layout, um, that's, that's totally fine. Again, I don't think there's anything wrong with uh, simplicity and, um, you know, just kind of having it what it is. But if you want to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and maybe put a, a professional finishing touch on it, um, instead of having, you know, like all this white area, you could consider adopting, um, you know, a capability statement template like I have on the, res on, the, on the resources website or, you know, really any of these type of layouts. I mean, these are all really good examples to follow. Um, so again, uh, that's something that I would, you know, offer up there. It's, it's really up to you guys um, what you want to do with that. But I would go back to focusing on NAICS code expanding out the description of what each snakes code is as well as adding some personal past performance if you don't have company past performance and that can be done by way of adding that here um, for the personal past performance for for uh, mr. Franco and mr. Reese or you could create a new section regarding personal experience or company experience and and break it out there so in a nutshell that's that's what I would say it looks like you covered a lot of the the other um, information that you need to so um you know good job guys on this um you know everybody has uh, areas to improve and you know i know even you know you, you you made this you know right away because you even have your cage code waiting on approval so i know that you have intentions to come back and, and update this and probably make some tweaks so um i think everything i'm saying is probably in line with you know where where you're where you're headed so uh, i i think we're good i think we're really good here so next, I do want to take a look at the SAM profile for you guys, since we know that we're uh, dealing with some couple of guys here. I can say guys without misstepping. And uh, what you do is you go to SAM.gov. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll take a step back. You go to SAM.gov, and then you just go to search records. So what I'm going to do is go back to the capability statement. And I'm going to pull the Duns number. So we got 11, 721, 37, 29. Okay, so that shows us the one only Apex Infrastructure and Technologies. 
So I want to view the details. So I click on um, core data and this will tell me some, some information regarding this business as it were updated and created in SAM.gov. So maybe I'll try to zoom in a little bit for you guys to make it easier to see. So uh, here we go. It looks like you guys already got your cage. Um, so there you go. You can update that in your capability statement. That's awesome. Um, business start date, 9-25-2019. So September 25th. Today is October 25th. So exactly one month ago, um, your business started. So congratulations, guys. It looks like you've really hit the ground running with this. I'm proud of you for you know getting registered in SAM and getting all this stuff set up just in a, in a month's period of time. Really, that's all that it takes, but a lot of people take a lot longer to, to go about doing that. Um, so, so good for you guys. I'm really excited for your, um, your growth and you getting into the GovCon space. Um, so let me see what else. So we already know Fairfax, Virginia. Really what I'm, I'm looking for now is um, any uh, set-asides. So we see minority-owned, Hispanic-owned, good to know. And I am going to be looking, let me back out real fast. I also want to look at the NAICS codes and see how those compare to what we have in the capability statement. So the capability statement, we have four NAICS codes, which is, you know, a great number. I always recommend, you know, three to five or three to seven in a, in a capability statement. Um, so you have four of your five, six, seven, eight, nine, NAICS codes that you have in your SAM. One thing I want to check is, is your primary NAICS code in your capability statement. And the one that says yes next to it is your primary NAICS code, 561311. And I do remember that being your first one here. So that's another thing you could even add to your capability statement. Uh, you could say that this is your primary in the parentheses or something like that if you wanted to. But um, you don't have to. And then I know that there's an you know, reps inserts and point of contact. I think it's the point of contact. There's an area where you would put in your uh, your company's website. It, once you, you know, get to that point, I know you don't have one yet. So once you get your website set up, you could go back into SAM and update that. I feel like it would show in your business information here. So maybe, but normally it would be just left blank. So um, I forget exactly where that is, but I know that would be, be a thing. So I would um, draw your attention to that. Once you set up your website, go back into your SAM and update that where, um, wherever you can find that. So as far as the SAM uh, profile, I'm good, looks good. Your NAICS codes are spot on. You didn't have too many NAICS codes, which is one of the other main things that I look for. You had about 10 and that's, you know, that's really good. So kind of the last thing that I want to take a look at is your um, your dynamic small business search profile. So I'm going to click here in your link in uh, SBA dynamic small business search. And that's going to take me to the DSBS. And just like how I found your, your SAM profile using your DUNS number, I'm also going to use your DUNS number to find your DSBS profile. If I can manage to type it in without getting an error. Three, seven, two. Why does this keep happening? Seven, two, one, three, seven, two, nine. Three, seven, two, nine. My computer has been acting really funny lately. Okay. And here we go. Again, the one and only Apex Infrastructure and Technology. So here we are in the SBA Dynamic Small Business uh, profile. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click on it. So here we are. And you may or may not know some of the information in your SBA profile automatically pulls from SAM.gov. And then other information does not pull. So oftentimes, um, People do not know that everybody who's registered in SAM has an SBA profile. They may or may not just have 
uh, updated the, the information that needs to be updated. So we'll take a quick look at this as the final step in today's business review for Apex. So again, this is all information right here in this first section that has automatically been pulled and updated from Sam. So this automatically pulls. Um, I know I see there's a spot right here for the web page. So um, once you get your website set up again, it would flow through into your dynamic small business search profile as well. And there's nothing really that you have to do here. This is all you know kind of filled out. Next, if you were a, a hub zone or in the 8A program, that would show up here. And that would be something that you would certify in your SAM profile. And that would automatically pull and update. But aside from that, it's letting us know at the top that you're Hispanic American and other minority owned um, business. Again, the, the current principals who are the, the owners and you don't have any, you know, 8A joint ventures or anything either. Um, but if in the future, you know, this is a dynamic business search and dynamic means it's always updating. So anything you change in your SAM profile to update, say you get into the 8A program next year or something like that, um, that will automatically update and pull through. So that way, if a contracting officer is searching for 8A companies, for example, your company then would show up, but right now it, it wouldn't because it's not updated. So it is a, di a dynamic profile that will um, you know update as you update things in SAM. So just make sure your SAM is current and then everything on you know the back end will be good to go. So now moving on to this next part where there is some stuff that you have to manually uh, update. This is the product and services section. And the first section is the capabilities narrative. So I'm happy to see that uh, Apex has actually went in here and, and written something. You know, a lot of companies have not written uh, anything and it's just blank. So one thing that I look for is basically SEO, search engine optimization, the use of keywords, and they have definitely jam packed these things with, with keywords that's gonna help them pull up in the search in the dynamic uh, search on the contracting officer's end or whoever's you know on there searching for companies. They've, they've broken down their cyber, not their cyber, their, their IT and cyber services. And then they've also broken down their staffing solutions. And this is probably maybe a copy and paste from their capability statement, which is fine because that uh, promotes consistency to the reader. Um, I don't know if there's a way to, I don't think there is, because I don't think this is very uh, user friendly. I don't think you can like click an enter button right here and create some space because it's it's a lot of uh, words all together. And I don't think you can, I don't think there's anything that you guys can do about that. If there, if there were, it would make things a little bit more uh, reader friendly, but I, I think this is good. I think it's fine. I don't think you can do that. Um, you've utilized this section to its fullest. Um, so good job on this, because if you didn't, it would just be blank. So I'd like to see that. Um, special equipment, not applicable. Business type, not applicable. You're not a construction company, so this is blank. Now we have your NAICS codes. Again, these automatically pull, so you don't have to do anything here. And it lets us know at the very top what your primary NAICS code is. Um, so that is there. Now moving on to the next section, keywords just like the capabilities narrative, keywords will be left blank if you don't put anything in there. What I, I like to see here is that there's a, a double a doubling effect of your keywords here and the, the words that you've used in your capabilities narrative. That's gonna help your searchability. Um, this is something that is often overlooked and at times keywords is also left blank. So um, it looks like you've done a really good job at matching up your keywords to your capabilities narrative and overall what your company does. So um, unless you wanted to add more in here, because I know you have not utilized all the characters, um, you could add more keywords. Uh, more is not you know, less in this case, um, more is more. So that's one thing that you could do if you wanted to. Um, otherwise, you're, you're good. Kind of moving on to the last section here um, is the performance history, and we've talked about this. So since you don't have any past performances, you can leave this blank for now. However, you know, I went on a, uh, like a soapbox last time um, on, on the first business review of people leaving 
past performance history blank. And it was no re- on no reflection of the company I was reviewing last time. It was just a general pet peeve that I've heard people say, and I wanted to make sure that it's not something that people are doing if they have past performance. Um, don't be afraid of people stealing your past performance. Don't let that hold you back from putting information here. If you're new and you're just getting started out like Apex, okay, that's fine. Um, you know, if you have any commercial projects though that you've worked on, I really like like to have at least one thing in here. So even in your personal experience, if you've worked on a project, you know, for your your old or your existing company that relates to this, I would find some clever way just so this isn't blank because it looks like you've done absolutely nothing. Um, and it's just, you know, it doesn't look good. So to be able to have something is, you know, it's, it's going from zero to one, at least it's something and you're not in the group any longer with those people who have like wrote nothing and it is blank. So at least differentiate, differentiate yourself from those folks who are just leaving this blank because they haven't even taken the time, you know, to fill this out, or maybe they just don't know because they're not in, you know, we're not, they're not in this Facebook group, because if you're in this Facebook group, you know that you have to complete your SBA profile, right? That's something I harp on a lot, right? So um, if they're in some other group, maybe they just don't know, or they're not in any group, we need to get them here. So um, yeah, there's just, maybe there's something that you could think of guys to put in this past performance section, even if it's personal. Um, So it's not blank, so that you differentiate yourself from those who just didn't take the time to fill this out. That's really the only thing that I would say about this. You did an excellent job at filling out your capabilities narrative as well as your your keywords and having those match that optimizes your SEO and increases your chances of being found. Although, you know, we're not just sitting around being passive waiting to be found. We're we're going out there and engaging contracting officers and small business reps, but being found certainly does help, right? You know, it doesn't hurt to get a a random email or a phone call from a contracting specialist asking if you can do such and such a work and they want to send you a statement of work, read it and let them know if you're capable. I mean, that's a that's a pretty cool thing that I've had, you know, I've gotten to experience, you know, a number of times. So I just want to increase those chances for you guys and the likelihood that that happens. And that, you know, really begins with having a complete dynamic small business search profile. So that's really it, you guys. Again, we've we've taken a look at the capability statement for Apex. I've given my thoughts on that, mainly um, to add uh, the description of the NAICS codes, consider adding personal past performance either within the contact information or break out a new section, and also consider, um, once you have some time, uh, adopting a, a, a capability statement with a little bit more professional overlay um just because there's a lot of white space here and um you know it it just doesn't look the best compared to some other capability statements i know you guys literally like got started a month ago so this is awesome you know i I commend you and and like i pointed out you need to update your cage code because i know that you did this right away um before your cage code even came through so like i you know you guys did this so quickly I know that you're you're basically thinking the same way that I'm thinking about this, so I'm sure you'll um you'll you'll take a look at that as well. So we looked at the Cape statement. We've taken a look at the SAM profile as well. We've got so many tabs open up here, guys. We've taken a look at their SAM, and everything looks squared away here. There's not too many NAICS codes. We did find out that you know this company started only a month ago, um, and yeah, the only thing that would be uh. I would say it is missing or rather yet to come is the website. And I know website is a bit more involved. I know that very well. Um, and I'm sure that will be forthcoming and that'll be updated in the SAM and all the other information. So uh, really good job, you guys, really good job. Um, that's really that all that I can give for the business review. If you want me to do a second follow-up review, um, maybe once you update the capability statement and if you get a, a website up, I would be more than happy to do a, a follow-up business review to Apex to look at those additional information. Um, but for today, that's really going to do it. If you guys, if you, if you found this helpful and you want to uh, have your business reviewed, just inbox me uh, at the GovKid Method Facebook page. Um, I'm actually able to uh, send and receive messages on that page. Um, I'm not able to on the group page. I can't 
uh, private message members and members can't message me in, in the Facebook group here. So just go on over to the GovKid Method uh, actual page and it'll allow you to send me a message if you're interested in getting your business reviewed. That way you'll be able to send me your capability statement and your other information um, and confidence without you know posting that publicly and we could get you on the schedule and the list. So that will be it for me today, guys. Hope you guys have a great weekend lined up going into Halloween. Got some fun things going on. I will see you guys next time and just you know stay uh, abreast in the group here for some up, upcoming and cool things that we have going on. So we will see you guys soon, guys. Later.